Boy, has it been a minute since we've done the soliloquy episodes. Uh, this is episode 14. So welcome back. If this is a series that, you know, y'all would want to get back into or whatever. And if y'all don't care, we could just keep doing the regular things. We could just do film and streams. But um, someone requested that I come back with one of these because, you know, I, I, there's a couple things to talk about. And, you know, there's this other little pressing topic at the end that we got to get to. So I uh, appreciate y'all for being here. Let's just kind of get into it, bro. Um, I consider myself as as one of the the front soldiers of cowboy nonsense. So what I like to do is equip y'all with cowboy weaponry so when we're out in these streets out in these internet streets we're fighting with the opposition y'all uh you know y'all 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 are well equipped to deal with the nonsense that you hear and i just got my notepad right so if i look down i'm just looking at the notepad um one one thing we've been seeing a lot is you know when you run into the four letter networks three letter networks and i'm a victim of this too you know when the cowboys win i want to know what the networks are talking about even though they spew nonsense headache inducing nonsense i still would like to know what the vibe is around the street and one thing i've been noticing it's been quite peculiar um when you you know when you listen to them talk but there's this this notion going around that you know that the the, the cowboys aren't playing anybody and i just think that's that's weird you know just on a lot of different levels um first and foremost what like you know when you watch the letter networks there's a person that tells the truth and then there's the person that goes against them for narrative and debate and argument sake so what happened is they'll have a cowboy segment and they have these every day and there's a person telling the truth about the cowboys they're saying great things about the cowboys then they have this other person for the sake of argument for, for argument sake there, there's just another person that's saying you know inflammatory things about the cowboys that don't make sense just to oppose the other person and one thing that, that you know I I've been seeing is you know two things really is that we haven't played anybody and we have a week schedule coming up and i think both those comments are interesting because when they talk about us not playing anybody they only go three games back you know what i mean they only go to carolina without christian they talk about um the giants and they talk hilarious they talk about the giants and you know missing saquon and daniel jones giants like they were scoring so many points when they was in the game and then they go back to the eagles right so those are the three teams that they talk about when they say the cowboys haven't played anybody it's interesting because they just totally ignore um the the full-blown fist fight that we had with the goat and the buccaneers and beating um the la Chargers, the only team that have beat the la Chargers. so i just think that them ignoring that is is super interesting when they're trying to make their arguments um they also say things like all oh, the offense is dynamic but their defense have you know they they've given up uh the most passing yards in the, in the league or something like that well you, you you would give up the most passing yards when you when you're beating the shit out, out of some team and and they got to throw the ball to catch up like that's just how this thing works um so that's just one thing there but what's most interesting is when they comment and they say um well well you know y'all have an easy schedule coming up and that's interesting right where my phone at so this is their idea of easy schedule coming up and we're gonna not talk about the Patriots because we're playing them next but um we got the Vikings Broncos Falcons Chiefs Raiders that's their idea of an easy schedule coming up and that should tell you what they think about you right because they say it's an easy schedule coming up but easy schedule is subjective if they were talking to Jets fans would that be an easy schedule the easiest team on their schedule is the is the Falcons <laughs> and they just had a fist fight with the damn they just fought for their life for the Falcons so if you're talking to a Jets fans you say hey man the Raiders the Broncos the the Chiefs and the Vikings coming up how do you feel <laughs> is that an easy schedule coming up and they will say yeah that's a pretty hard schedule for the uh for the for the Jets or whatnot right this schedule is only easy because they think highly of the Cowboys so I want to equip you with that information when they say oh well uh y'all got a cupcake schedule relatively easy schedule coming up that just mean they have faith in us to beat the shit out of the Vikings or to beat the shit out of the Raiders or to beat the shit at the Broncos so that's a compliment so let them know that you know we're glad that you're thinking highly of us um Another thing too, like there's a there's a lesson in every bar. And what I mean by lesson in every bar is even if these teams 
are beatable or they are considered easy pickings for the Cowboys. If they are considered to be light, there's still a lesson in every bar. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, we're supposed to beat the Giants and the Eagles, but how do we respond versus divisional opponents? You know, we're supposed to beat the Patriots, of course, but how do we play, you know, that defense on the road? You know, I feel like we were supposed to beat the Carolina Panthers, but how do you respond to a test after beating the shit out the Eagles with this great defense that the Panthers have? You know what I mean? Like I like I feel like every single game that we run into, there's a conversation to be had. I feel like we're gonna beat the shot at the Vikings, but how do we respond when we play against a team with um with two good receivers? You know what I mean? There's a test every single week. No matter what team it is that we're that we're running into, um you can say what you want, but we're gonna run into the Broncos, right? They got pass rushes and 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 corners over there. You know what I mean? So I don't want to look at any team in the National Football League and be like, oh, this is a cupcake. Uh, the Cowboys don't deserve credit for for beating that team. Even the Washington Football players, right? The Washington Football characters got four first round picks on their front seven. We're gonna beat the shit out of that team. We're gonna do it. But the lesson is, how do we deal with that front four? As we're beating the shot to watch the football characters, you, you, you see where I'm going here. So uh, there's no such thing as a as a team that we're supposed to be beating. We are gonna beat the shit out of everybody, even the Chiefs, even the Cardinals, like all these little teams coming up. We are gonna smoke everybody. It's just how you do it and the different matchups that you run into. That's the real test for you. Hey man, I apologize to Michael Parsons. This is what I will apologize for. Um. I will apologize for how I reacted to him being drafted in the face of the community. He didn't deserve that. And and a lot of the reason why I felt that way was because I'm super big Rashawn Slater guy. And I literally felt like Rashawn Slater was, was the best player on the board. And he was sitting there at 12 and we traded back. We got extra picks. I was like, yo, bro, this is prime uh, Rashawn Slater territory, right? But... I got caught up being a fan, you know what I mean? I got caught up being, being a draft fan when I should have been a draft analyst at the time. So, Michael Parsons, I, I truly apologize, sir. You, you you didn't deserve the energy that I gave off because, sir, you're, you're, you're way better than I thought you were going to be. But let me kind of explain why I didn't think he was going to be what he was going to be. This is what I thought Michael Parsons was, was going to be. And to an extent, he is this. Um, he is... A super athlete, probably the most athletic person on the field. Um, he can play linebacker. He can do some pass rush things. And um, you're going to have some mental processing errors with him. But if you develop him, he's going to be like one of them dudes. If you look at my draft video, there's a Michael Parsons pre-Cowboy draft video. You can go check it out. Um, that's what the files are for. So if you think I'm lying, go check my files. But that's what I felt with the whole Michael Parsons thing. Now you insert the idea that we haven't seen a player like Micah Parsons before. When, you know, people were on the internet, they were talking that Micah Parsons was gonna be a Von Miller type pass rusher. I couldn't co-sign that because when you look at the Penn State film, go back and watch the film. If y'all wanna do this on Patreon one day, we can do it. Go back and watch the film. The pass rushing that he's doing now is not the pass rushing he did at Penn State. He was not a good cover guy at, at Penn State. He was faster than a lot of these kids, you know, that was out there playing. But the cover guy that we saw in camp is not the cover guy that we saw in Penn State. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of these traits that I saw from Micah in training camp, in practice, and in the game now, right? The things that I saw from Micah Parsons were not things that I saw on his college tape. Now, if you flip that and you take Rashawn Slater, Everything that Rashawn Slater is doing right now, I saw in college tape. You see what I'm saying? So the reason I reacted in that way was because, you know, it, it, it was it was it was basically uncertainty. You know what I mean? It was uncertainty. Now, who's the better player now? I still think Rashawn Slater is the better player now. But who's the better fit in Dallas? Um, I think Michael Parsons getting to Dallas was right on time. You know what I mean? So um, I'm glad it worked out. I'm glad I was wrong about this. I apologize to Michael Parsons. I was totally wrong about the player um, that he was. And, and to be he, he didn't play in 2020, man. Who knows how much better you get from what you gave us in 2019 to the cat that you got in 2020. You can't hold me accountable for that. 
But I'm taking accountability for that. Michael Parsons, you way be- you're way better than I thought you were. I apologize. My fault. I was checking my numbers last night, and um, I have hit 70,000 subscribers. And um, it's a feeling that that never gets old, you know. Um, you know, reaching higher highs, and um, you know the the people that stick around to to listen to my nonsense. You know, like there's more people that are subscribed to my channel than there are people in my hometown in Natchez, Mississippi. You know what I mean? And you know that that means a lot to me. Um, you know, YouTuber anatomy is a real thing. I think we're all built from the same kind of thing. You know that that thing where. Um, We'll read 50 comments and there'll be 49 great comments. There'll be one bad comment and I would just want to talk shit about that one person that's talking bad and totally ignore the 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 49 good ones. Like I, I'm really trying to rehab off of that. You know what I mean? But I think we're all built from the same thing. And I think the the one thing that YouTubers have in common or people that do YouTube content, I don't want to fall into a category or anything like that. But this YouTube thing is kind of like a child of ours you know what i mean i don't have any children not yet i want five um but this youtube thing it started from i had this day job i was working at pizza hut i was a delivery guy and i was listening to and i always shout shout jeff out to the I, I, I listen i was listening to jeff and brian jeff cavanaugh and brian brothers i was listening to him in my headphones my boss just came down and said they didn't want us to have headphones in while we was working. I was like, F y'all. And I had my headphones in and I was listening to Dallas Cowboy content while I was pissed off while my clothes smelled like dirty dishwater. You know what I mean? And th- there was just this point to where, you know, I would go around and, and, and talk sports with people, talk Cowboys with people. And I would have this nuanced take and I was draft guy a little bit. Um, and just, you know, people will tell you, hey, man, you need your own show. You need to do your own thing. And the great thing about YouTube is that it allows us to to do our own thing. I said this on the roundtable the other day. Just imagine if I was like a qualified football analyst, right? And I wanted to go work for Fox. But Terry Bradshaw won't give his job away. Michael Strahan and Jimmy Johnson won't give their job away. The other character... I forgot his name or whatever. Just those dudes don't give those jobs away. And they just going to be in those job positions for 40, till they gone, till they retire. Then when they leave, some other athlete going to come in and go right in that spot, right? What if I'm a qualified sport talking person and all I need is the opportunity to be great? But Terry Bradshaw won't retire. Stephen A. Smith won't retire. Um, Skip Bayless won't retire. I mean, shots out to them, they making their money, providing their family, whatever, whatever. But what this YouTube thing does is it gives us an opportunity to be who we are, to be great and run a show how we want to run it. You know what I mean? People say all the time, Vach, you should be on ESPN. No, because if I'm on ESPN, I can't talk shit. I can't cuss. I can't laugh. I can't say things like, y'all hoes better stop throwing that Trey Diggs. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? It's certain things that I can't do. I can't take callers like Uncle Charlie. You know what I mean? I can't do the things on my show. We can't call around to three different burger restaurants and ask them, do they have 40 burgers? You know what I mean? There's certain things we can't do if I work for a network, but this YouTube thing allows me to do it. It allows me to present to you my sport opinion, which is art, by the way. I can get into why this is art at some point, but it allows me to express myself and present my sports opinion the way I want to present it. However I want to do it. I can't get fired. I can get canceled if I say some wild shit, but I can't get fired. I think there's some dope shit behind that. I think that's, I think it's power in that. You know what I mean? So the fact that I've crafted this child, this baby, this thing from the desire to talk sports and, you know, let people hear me talk sports. It wasn't even about money for real, for real. It was just about me wanting to have my own show and it eventually turned into a job. This thing that didn't exist, kind of like a child, you have love for something. Just like a person that you would have a child with, you put in the work, you get it pregnant, and now you have this thing, this thing that 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 didn't exist, but it's a piece of you now. That's what my YouTube channel is. So the fact that I had this child and 70,000 people think my child is cool, that shit's kind of fly. Plasma. 
So just like I said, at sixty thousand and fifty thousand and forty thousand, and like I'll probably say at eighty and ninety two, we get to a hundred. Um, I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for coming in and dealing with my nonsense. And you know, if you think I'm entertaining, hey man, you know, tell a friend, tell a friend to come sub and to be a part of this family so that we can, uh, you know, we can we can get this thing to higher higher highs. You know what I mean? Um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. It, every time I cut the camera on, I still get a little nervous talking to y'all. But every time I I cut the camera off, it comes down on me and i'm grateful for the opportunity to you know be on y'all little computer screens or your phone while you're on your lunch break or on the toilet however you consume this this uh content or whatever um you know i'm 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 still humbled and blown away at the notion that y'all you know care about my thoughts and opinions all right with that being said man i appreciate you till the next uh you know milestone gets here that'll be 80 you know what i'm saying appreciate y'all hold it down for the doski woski and the peace whiskey. whiskey.